killed. I literally had a pain in my heart. Now, I'm telling you that it felt like somebody kicked me. We've been waiting for a notification. We knew it was my brother from within an hour of the, of, of the situation. We knew it was him. Well, that was Marco Cordero, who spoke to KTSM about his brother Julio Cordero, saying he was the man killed in Thursday morning's officer-involved shooting at the Franklin High School parking lot. And Cordero says his brother was a decorated FBI agent. Not only is he voicing the family's frustration related to the lack of communication about Cordero's body, but also the memories he shared with his brother. KTSM 9 News reporter Jesus Baltasar has more. He was bald and he could scare people just with his mere presence. I can see how people could react to his mere presence, but he was a gentle giant. He was, he was, a, nice, he was a nice man. Julio Cordero came from a working class family of eight children. He himself was a father of four. He was also an accomplished lawman who alongside two of his brothers served in the FBI for decades. He could read something, he could watch something, and his mind was just amazing. He, he could remember details. There was no BSing. During his service, Julio won prestigious awards, most notably, leading an investigation that uncovered a web of massive public corruption among El Paso leaders in 07. He was very well respected in, 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 at the AUSA's office and, and within the, the local office. Um, 41 indictments, um, a lot of arrests. But his brother says Julio's dedication to the Bureau and his job consumed him. Work was his priority and not his family. And he would, he would subsequently, specifically after retirement, he would suffer for that, for that decision. Marco says his brother would only learn after retirement that his legacy were his children. Despite his extensive career as a lawman, Marco says Julio was a nonviolent and even delicate man. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you he didn't have emotional slash mental issues, he did. And, and we struggled with him. Marco explained that Julio had a few run-ins with the law stemming from his deteriorating mental state. Incidents where Cordero broke windows to businesses, but would go back to apologize and offer to pay for the damages after snapping out of those episodes. Episodes of PTSD and paranoia that can be traced back to tragic events in Julio's life. To say, to, to, to give you a, a much better understanding, I have to go back to 1993 when he had the car accident. He struggled with the memory of losing his sister in a car accident from which he came out of nearly unscathed, only to suffer from another scarring experience later in life. He's driving down one of the streets and somebody jumped in front of his car. And uh, he would die. Cordero could never forget the suicidal man's face, an image that would haunt him for the rest of his life. And that was something that Julio just could not let go of. And that was his, that was the beginning of his decline in, 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 in emotional health. Marco says his brother would go to therapy and take medication only to stop the treatments after thinking he felt better and would have to start the cycle all over again. So beautiful people get sick. He was very well taken care of. I, we as an extended family did everything to protect him, everything. Outside of living his life, there was nothing more we could have done. Earlier this year, Marco says they also lost their mother, who with his job and children was everything to Julio. No one's going to know, hey, he suffered death here. He suffered death here. He carried that guilt with him, and it burdened him to the point where he felt inadequate, like I shouldn't be happy because these people died. As a law enforcement family, the Corderos are now seeing the world from a different perspective. You know, they tell you to put your hands up, put your damn hands up, right? Don't, don't fight the cops. I mean, suddenly I find myself on the other side of the fence. And now I'm not so quick to say, do what the cops tell you to do, right? Hey, Suze Baltasar reporting. The family hopes to start getting answers soon and want the body camera and surveillance footage to be released to the friends of the family in law enforcement. Well, to read more on this story, you can head over to our website at KTSM.com and click on this article.